Completely impossible. This Northern Iowa Texas A&M game. The hero from Friday night, Paul Jesperson, he of the half court heave. This time the hero early on was Clint Carlson. He kind of hijacks the highlight here, Walt. He should. He, this team spread Texas A&M out. They took away their advantage and their big man in Davis, and they were on fire from outside. This was pretty basketball, pretty execution. Coach Jacobson just was doing a great job of manipulating matchups. Carlson was 7 of 14, 3 of 4 from three point range. He had 17 on the night. Northern Iowa up a dozen. There's Bohannon. With 44 seconds left in this game, and an issue here Matt Bohannon, their best inbounder, had to leave the game with cramps. Keep that in mind. Iowa, Northern Iowa turns it over. Apparently an entire basketball team in Division One. only one guy knows how to inbound the ball. Unbelievable. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel House had been over 9 to the game. inbound the ball from under the basket. That's rule number one. Uh -oh. Don't throw it to the other guy when you're falling out of bounds. Yes, that's a good one too. Here's another one. Right under the basket. Four turnovers, the final 31 seconds of this game, and it's getting uncomfortably close for the Panthers. It is. House hits another one. Remember, he had been 0 for 9 until 26 seconds left in the game. That, that worked. That, that worked. was a very smart play, take advantage of the ultra, ultra pressure that was coming from a &M. But this is too easy. At some point, Caruso. Not sure where the foul was on the guy's backing up, but yeah, there was a little contact. Yeah, anyway. Gotta try to avoid the foul. Bruce had a career high. Right. Roll it long. Just throw it down the other end. That's the last thing you can do right there. The trap works. The game is tied. Just for Look at the ladies. They got out of the it. From up 12, it's tied. Maybe another miracle. Not gonna happen. Wes Washburn hit him. Buzzer beater in the championship game of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. This time they have to go to overtime. Jeremy Morgan, by the way, had a career high 36. First Missouri Valley Conference player with a 35 12 game since Larry Bird. And he's not the story. Paul Jesperson hits the three. Northern Iowa back on top. Daniel House. Remember, I told you this first bucket with 26 seconds <laughs> left in regulation. <laughs> he finished with 22. Oh my god, oh, that's incredible. Wyatt Lowhouse, he's been over five when he took that shot, Coach. They went well one full and gave him the ball on uh, on Morales, and, and he hit a big shot. Caruso with the runner. I mentioned career high, 25 points for Caruso. Game time with 83. Six seconds left, and you settle for this shot. I don't understand. I'm very comfortable from that spot. Of the I guess. They I mean, didn't I, have Wasserman in the game in order to get that ball and attack the basket and drive. I mean, you joke about it, but that might be what Jesperson is thinking at that point. He did it the last game, and yeah, but by a day's out good. They also had a timeout. With yeah. that much time. The only thing that he could have done, possibly, there, has lost, has lost track of, of how much time he got. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only That's the only possible. House with the jumper. It's a two-possession game for Texas A&M. Now down three. Last chance with the Panthers. Morgan can't get it to fall. And somehow Northern Iowa does. This team should be a ride at six flags. <laughs> That's a lot of the week. <laughs> Jesperson with the half-court buzzer beater on Friday night to advance them to the second round, and they can't hold a 12-point lead with 44 seconds left in regulation in round two. And m somehow moves forward and carries the banner of the SEC, the lone SEC team. Sorry, Kevin. So okay. moving into the Sweet 16, uh, first Sweet 16 since 2007, and maybe a little sweeter than ever. saw one. Still really don't know what happened when I heard that we were up down 12 with 34 or 43 seconds to play in one. I mean, come on, man. I mean, I don't know what Vegas' odds are on, on, on a situation like that. I'm just still lost for words. 
I'm, I'm still just shocked. I mean, I just know that my teammates and I just continued to fight throughout the game, and we kept fighting, and the coaching staff kept telling us to fight. Our bench kept backing us up. The crowd kept backing us up. And, uh, man, it, it was just probably one of the best victories of my life. Man, we, we played our tails off. And unfortunately, we were on the wrong side of the, you know, just a crazy 30 seconds. But everything that happened to get to that point, these are three of the finest young men and three of the best guys we've ever had come through our program, and I'm, I'm extremely proud of them. Just uh, couldn't have uh, be prouder to, to be uh, with Paul and Wes here and, and, and understand what we did this season and um, what we showed the country. and. How we, how we understand that uh, we, should, we should be moving on. Um, um, but uh, credit them for making some plays, but we were, we were 30 seconds away from getting one step closer to our, uh, to our goals. I couldn't have asked for two better guys to go out with. Um, I'm gonna miss these guys, these guys are my brothers. I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be real close to them for the rest of my life. And I'm just thankful, uh, thankful that Coach gave me a chance to be a part of it. Time for the expectation shadow performance that I presented by Buick, the 14-2-1, which helped get the Aggies to overtime. We could also describe it as heart-wrenching or mind-bending, because none of us has ever seen anything like this. Coach, what just happened? Well, what happened was some panic on the part of Northern Iowa's, uh, you know, press offense, and and then what you do when you when you have such a lead is you stop you stop guarding. They just drive around you and shoot layups, and, and um, but a couple of turnovers. Lowhouse there needed to run the baseline. He needed to use the the width of the baseline to run and improve his passing angles, and he didn't. He kind of became stationary, which you see happen a lot. But then, and they threw the ball inbounds on the baseline. And that, that continued to hurt them because that's where the easiest traps occur. Yeah, when you get the ball off the first pass, you've got to start dribbling. You just can't hold the ball because you know a double team's coming. You've got to start escaping away from when the defense is coming. You, 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 listen, these kids, they didn't have a timeout, so they, they were flustered. They were overwhelmed. The crowd was against them. Everything was going against them. But the first thing you've got to do is just escape. And if you escape just once, you're going to get fouled. That's, but I, but they didn't, you know, they they didn't have their ball handler for part of the, uh, for for part of it. Washburn was in the game and he made that last turnover. It's just I, I've never seen anything like that. It's unfathomable as a basketball player for that to happen. Everything, a, a sequence of. 10 to 12 events have to go exactly right for that to happen. When the one time when Jesperson tried to hit the guy, the guy was out of bounds. If that ball nicks his shirt, and it might have hit something, he's out of bounds, but it's still their ball. It doesn't go right to the other team, and they score. It's just an incredible turn of events. And, complete and, and, yeah. calamity. I mean, the, the foul, all the turnovers, everything that possibly could have gone wrong in that short span of time went wrong. And, and the quantity of things that yes. have to go wrong for that kind of comeback. It actually underscores a point where a lot of times in these games, the other team will foul real quickly. And I always think it's a better strategy not to foul right away. Try to get a steal, try to get a trap. Yeah. You can be overly yeah. aggressive, and if you do foul, you're putting the other team on the foul line, which probably would, would you want to end up doing anyway. And in a couple of those inbound passes, when they were able even to get the ball inbounds, yeah. They were waiting to get fouled. Like Washburn, you could see he's waiting to get fouled. You and Jamie, can't that's exactly right. That. He's, a, he's waiting to get fouled. And the referee, Jamie Lucky, is standing right there. He never got fouled. And it's just, you just feel so, you know, as happy as I feel for those kids at Texas A&M, oh. multiply it by a thousand how badly oh I feel for those kids in Northern Iowa. And it, the fact that this happened two days after a half court shot banked yeah. in, which happened. Five days after a ball bounced on the rim, that gave them a, a, a game-winning shot because they weren't That's even right. getting that large bit. I mean, this is the craziness of March bottle up in one team, one program, in one week. Just unreal. One, th one thing we haven't unreal. talked about was they still had a six-point lead, and when they threw the ball out of bounds on the inbounds pass, and a and then was awarded the ball on the baseline, a and was able to run a play and make a one-pass inbounds pass, and Daniel House made the three. Mm -hmm. Even if you defend that, 
and get a stop and get the rebound, the game's over because you go down and shoot free throw. A any one of a number of things, as you said, Even Seth. two in that position. It doesn't hurt you as bad as a three because then it cuts it to a one-possession game. Literally, it was a one-pass, yeah. an open three, which that's as inexcusable as the mistakes that were made in press offense. The, the and one on Caruso, and Caruso comes down and scores. Hey, let him score. Or foul him, make sure he doesn't score. And the guy was trying to get out of the way. As I said, the, the sheer number of I can't wait to go back and watch and just count the number of things. It had to be nine or ten things that rarely go wrong, even one or two. And that's how something like this. And the Sharpie is, uh, mm. the Sharpie, oh, the Sharpie, that's right. Sharpie is, 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 is blemished mm. and imperfect like, like, uh,